Hey everybody, meteorologist Brad Panovich here. We're going to get to the tropics in a minute, but we got to talk about the heavy rain locally in the Carolinas. We're going to get to our two tropical systems, but we've got an immediate threat right now with heavy rain moving across most of the Piedmont. We've actually got a flash flood warning in effect for Catawba, Lincoln, and Gaston County uh, until this afternoon, 4.30 p.m., and we've got heavy rain with some hints of rotation at times. I've been watching these cells down here in Chester and York County. There's been signs of rotation in the mid-levels. Nothing spinning up yet, but that's something I'm keeping a really close eye on um, as that moves our way because that potentially um, could be producing maybe um, some rotation within that storm. So we'll have to keep an eye on those. But the big story today, heavy, heavy rain moving across the area in waves. So please be weather aware today. Do not drive into standing water. We could see um, flash flooding at any time. And there's more storms developing behind this. So this will not be the end of the heavy rain today. In fact, as I take a look at some of the rainfall totals, you can see these areas in Gaston, Cleveland, Lincoln County now approaching two to three inches. We've actually got a report up here of five inches. And this is just over the past 12 hours. So significant threat. Uh, for flash flooding in all of those uh, systems moving through. So let's go to the tropics because that's a big talk as well. We've got two systems out there, Tropical Depression 14 and Tropical Storm Laura. So we've got a new tropical storm. And Laura, while it's a tropical storm, it's still not well organized. Let's just say the low-level centers down here, we think, and the mid-level centers up here. Hurricane Hunters found some strong winds in there, but had a tough time relocating that center. It seems to be bouncing around quite a bit. So while it is a tropical storm with some strong winds in the northern side, it's not really ideally set up. Uh, Depression 14 has a nice little swirl right there, which I'm going to pause this because you can see right there, um, but it's kind of disorganized as well. There's a couple swirls that have been dancing around in there um, that the hurricane hunters noticed, and we're seeing it on satellite as well. So we'll see if this one gets organized. But of the two, I'm a little more concerned about this one if it gets a low-level center kind of put together because of the setup in the Gulf of Mexico ahead of it. And speaking of that, you're going to hear all this stuff about two hurricanes in the Gulf of Mexico. That is completely possible. But there's also a very high likelihood that this storm, Laura, has a lot more obstacles ahead of it. And one storm is going to win out. And I think Marco has the higher potential because of the environmental setup ahead of it. It's going to be over some of the warmest water down here in the Northwest Caribbean. If it crosses over the Yucatan Peninsula, it's very, very low elevation. Doesn't really impact the storm as much as other areas. And then in the Gulf of Mexico, it's very warm as well. With the lifting trough, it might actually help the storm a little bit. So Marco might end up dominating. And with Laura moving to the west, it's got to move over all the big islands. And there's some dry air to the north. So there's a lot of obstacles for Laura. Not saying it wouldn't happen. I just wouldn't put all my cards into saying, hey, we're going to have two hurricanes. Maybe two tropical systems, but maybe not two hurricanes. Um, and I'll show you why. Some of the guidance is pointing to this. If you look at the European model, which is one I look at quite a bit for overall steering, the European model doesn't have either one of these developing into a hurricane. It has them both in the Gulf of Mexico, but the green here um, are tropical storm force winds. So you're looking at a pretty weak system. Now, it looks like one of those was trying to develop it into a hurricane, but that's fairly weak. Um, and I'm going to move this up here just to get out of the way. So you can see that the down here are, are the wind speeds. So 34 knots, less than 64 knots, most of those. Let's look at the GFS. GFS has a couple members of both becoming a hurricane, but even they're pretty weak. So both of the big you know, global guidance is not really keen on this system. And if I go back to this and throw up, I'm going to throw up the uh, hurricane tracks here uh, of the spaghetti plots. So let me throw these up real quickly. Um, you can see that we've got a really tight clustering with Marco, a pretty big spread with Laura. Um, and some of these with Laura showing some interaction, some recurving, some down the middle. There's definitely a lot more ambiguity going on with Laura um, than there is Marco. And for that reason, I think Marco might end up being the dominant storm as we look at this. And just to show you uh, one piece of guidance, which is pretty interesting, uh, this is actually a German model, which shows the two pieces of energy entering the Gulf a little bit offset from each other. You can see one there and one there, um, and kind of doing what we call the Fujiwara, which means they'll rotate around each other briefly, and then one will move inland, and then one will weaken. So I heard a lot of rumors last night. There was a lot of clickbait out there about the Fujiwara effect and you know what the heck that is. Let me show you what it is. Basically, what happens is you get two storms that rotate around a central point. Now, the thing to remember about this is you don't get a megastorm. That is completely false. 
um, hurricanes in particular do not like to be by each other. They are, by their nature, um, want to be very in very low shear environments. So storms interacting with each other can cause them to rotate um, around each other or call them cause them to move differently, but it doesn't cause them to merge and be a bigger storm because hurricanes like they like warm water, light winds, and no land. If you have the Fujiwara going on in the Gulf of Mexico, like we're seeing with this thing, you have storms rotating against each other, causing wind shear. You have some moving over land, some moving over the cold water of the previous storm. So there's really no signs that these are going to become a bigger storm. One might win out and the other one might go away, but we're not seeing some mega storm. That's complete garbage. So if you see that, just ignore it. That is not something anybody is forecasting that knows what they're doing. Um, that is just clickbait. So what's steering these things? Well, we've got this mega trough over the um, Gulf of Mexico and that ridge of high pressure off to the east. So let's go into the future and you can see the, I'm gonna move my head up here. You can see the ridge right here dominating and pushing everything into the Gulf and this trough trying to lift. So what I think is gonna happen is this ridge is probably going to keep Laura pretty far south, which means it's got to plow through all the big islands. That's not favorable for a tropical system. While Marco is here sitting over the shallow um, you know, coast of Yucatan Peninsula, moves up into the Gulf of Mexico, the environment becomes a little more favorable here because we've got um, the trough lifting out. We're in between two ridges. So Marco, to me, looks like it's probably going to win out and become the stronger of the two. And notice Laura's, whatever's left of Laura's down here, they're not really that close to each other um, in the Euro model. So I think overall, you're probably looking at Marco becoming the dominant system of the two. But if I'm in Florida, I'm paying really close attention to Laura. And for that reason, I'm gonna tell you, everybody on the Gulf Coast needs to be in the ready state because if these storms, you know, one takes over, the one on the right could be stronger. If the one on the left takes over, it could be stronger. That means everybody should be thinking about hurricane preparedness in the Gulf Coast from Texas to Florida. Because if we have two systems out there, one thing we know for sure, it's going to be a lot of wet weather, a lot of storm surge, and likely a lot of high surf. So I would prepare in the entire Gulf Coast. So let me show you the tracks overall real quickly. I'll move my head out of the way. There's the track for Laura. You can see it moving up here and being in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, Tuesday morning into Wednesday morning. Here's uh, future Marco, Tropical Depression 14, in the Western Gulf about the same time frame. And notice the wind speeds as I go between the two. They're both minimal hurricanes. So, you know, one mile per hour difference here, and we have one that's a hurricane and one that's not. So don't get caught up in the big deal of, yeah, two storms out there. That would be kind of rare. We've only seen that happen once in 1933, but overall, it's more about being ready for the impacts from these storms. What are they going to mean to you and I? And really, right now, it looks like the main impact is going to be rain and storm surge. So keep an eye on this one in the Gulf Coast. Carolinas, we're worried about heavy rain today. Down the road, we might have to watch for some of this moisture getting up here late next week. So maybe some big rainmakers as we look ahead to the end of next week, something to keep an eye on in the long range. Of course, I'll be posting updates throughout the next couple of days and be safe out there today. We've got that heavy rain. Quick little update on that. Heavy rain moving through the area. Potential for flash flooding will persist through the evening.